Hi, my name is Tim Sinkowski. Uh, I am a wounded warrior from the 10th Mountain Division, 3rd Brigade, 371 Cavalry. I was born 1982, June 27th. Uh, I was wounded in Afghanistan, RC South, that's in the south region of Afghanistan, near Kaf, in the uh, Agandah Valley. Uh, I was hit by a, a IED. It was remote detonated by an Afghani, Afghanistan citizen. Uh, he remote detonated it by a cell phone. It was a 105 round. Uh, it took off both of my legs, part of my arm, and uh, uh, gave me a small bit of traumatic brain injury. But Tim's a phenomenal guy. Heart of gold, man. That guy. I remember right before he got hit too, he carried a cold, ice cold Gatorade in his cargo pockets, right? And he's handing them out to all of us. We had been out walking in front of the trucks while they're all driving in the, in the air-conditioned trucks, all that. We're out full kit walking in front. You know, it's hot as hell out there in Afghanistan. And so we pushed into this valley. Timothy's unit uh, drove all the way from Kandahar. It took him about two weeks to get to where we were at, you know, multiple IDs and whatnot. So it took him a while to get there about mid-September. It is about 50 meters up top of the hill. The rest of us was about halfway down the hill where the trucks were parked eating, at, eating MREs and uh, that's when the bomb goes off. And uh, right away, you know, you knew something was wrong because it just felt weird. So I go taking off running up top of the hill and you know, there's smoke and shit everywhere. And uh, Jim, my captain was the first guy I came across and you know, he's bleeding from his face and covered in smoke and <clears throat> I looked at him and he was walking and he comes up, he's like, hey, go get ski. So I knew he was, he was okay for the moment, right? So I, I let him go. Next person I came against was uh, Gundenhauser and he was sitting down and he had his damn hole in his throat. So I thought he was, he was pretty bad off and he started talking. I just did a real quick assessment. He was fine, just a little superficial uh, strap in the wound to his neck and the rest of his face. So I let him go, he was all right. I get to this big ass crater, you know, it's about four, four or five foot deep and Ski was laying in it with, you know, the rest of his legs, what was left of his legs sticking out. And uh, by this time I had over a hundred medevacs under my belt. I'd seen my fair share of ID guys, so I thought, I thought he was dead as shit. Um, my eyes were barely open, so I could just barely see what was in front of me. Only just feet, so I was only able to see my hands. I tried wiggling my toes. It felt like I was wiggling my toes, but there was an odd feeling that there was nothing there. So I tried kicking my feet. It felt like I was kicking my feet, but there was nothing there. So I took a second to stop and just took a deep breath and went, crap, my legs are gone. His left shin bone was completely intact, but uh, it was just clean. It was real clean. There's no meat, nothing on it, and uh, it's sticking out. And my first impression, looking at him, was you know he was dead. There's no way he could have survived this this IED strike. And uh, I, was, I was actually getting ready to leave him and move on to another patient. You now there was four total soldiers that got hit up on top of that hill. And uh, <laughs> so when he started talking to me, he scared the shit out of me. I said, "Hey, doc, uh, I think I need a Band-Aid." <laughs> This is Tim's left leg. And this is the scar from the tourniquet. Okay. And all these are the scars from them putting all my leg back together. Okay. Now this is my right leg. This is from the skin graft. And I'll show you where they put the skin graft in a minute. This is where they sealed up my leg. All of this right here, this is all the flesh, fatty tissue, and every the muscle, skin, all the extra skin that was down here below my kneecap. Uh, so they kept all this in case I need it for later on. Okay? This was from the blast. That cut into the nerve, into the muscle. That's why I can't move my thumb. You see right in here how the muscle and everything looks skinnier. What happened there is atrophy. The muscle and everything died.
But the reason is is because there's no nerve. So, and if you look right here, how the hand is smaller, it's just at, it's atrophy because the muscle is not being used. Okay. This is from the blast. This has it healed up. Just a minor scar. This right here was from this skin graft on the leg. This goes all the way down to the bone. I lost six to eight inches of the ulna nerve. Half of my bicep is gone and three quarters of my tricep. And the wound goes all the way around. I can't, I can't even uh, work against gravity, so my, if I put my hand above my head, it'll fall and hit me in the head. I also have shrapnel wounds to the face. Uh, there was a nail head that we pulled out of, they pulled out of my face. And there's nothing on my left hand. My left side of my body, right from here, had nothing on. The injury has affected my family, has affected everybody. Um, it just hasn't affected just my family, but it has affected my family a lot. Uh, with my family, it's it's changed me, um, and it's changed my family. Because I'm not home right now, uh, I'm stuck here, so it's still like I'm still on deployment. Uh, but I'm only a thousand miles away from I would much rather be at home. I'd much rather have my family here. But it's adapting to a new lifestyle. And adapting to a new lifestyle is hard. And my wife married the original me. She didn't ever marry the me that is. She never married me that I am now. But when she said I do, she married me for better or worse. Sickness and health and all that other fun stuff. But if she met what she said when she said I do, she'll stick by my side no matter what. And so far she has. And I've put her through hell with this. I've scared her to death because she thought she almost lost me. And she's still here and she's an amazingly strong woman. And my mom, she's living with me right now to help take care of me. And I mean, my family's just, they're amazingly strong. But at the same time, I mean, they're amazingly weak at the same time. They just, they don't show it. And sometimes I need to see that and they don't show me and it hurts. But, but the, it just, it makes me feel better knowing that they can still fight on and that they don't show me. So it's like an oxymoron. But I love it because they're no matter what they stand on my side. Um, my everyday life here at Walter Reed is I wake up every morning, get myself dressed. Um, I do it a little differently now that I don't have legs. So instead of getting up and standing up, what I do is I uh, I lay in bed, and put my clothes on in a bed instead of standing up like I used to. Um, I uh, get up and I go to normal formation as if I was in the military. And then, because I still, as far as everyone's concerned right now, I still basically am active military. Then from there I go to OT, which is occupational therapy. They help me with everyday needs. Uh, basically relearning how to clean the house, do dishes, take care of my two boys, uh, vacuum, make my bed, everyday living. And then from there I go to physical therapy where I learn to walk with my prosthetics, uh, which I have right here. Um, and I can show you those later. I also have, she's also teaching me new ways to do sit-ups and cardio, just about relearning to do uh, all physical therapy. Alright, these right here are my legs. Uh, this is the carbon fiber setup. 
Uh, all this right here is carbon fiber. Okay, carbon fiber is really sturdy. Now this is the actual socket, this white piece. This is where my leg is actually custom fitted to. This is what my entire thigh is. They basically make a uh, like a, uh, they make like a pinata, like a casting of my leg, and then they, uh, they after they make a, a mold, a casting, then they make a mold, then they make this, a socket, that looks similar to my thigh. And then I jump it, and then they make a valve, which is this, that allows for pressure to come and go, from inside the leg. Uh, it hurts the first time you get in your legs. Uh, it's to be expected because now you're, you're doing something your body's not used to. Uh, it just takes time and it's like walking on stilts on your knees. So if you can get a pair of stilts, kneel on them, don't put a pillow, don't put anything on them, on that little step, kneel on them and walk. Strap them to your leg and walk. That's what it feels like. I don't recommend it because you're going to fall on your face. It's going to hurt. But if you do that, that's what it feels like for us every time we walk. Eventually, over time, we get used to it. And then that's how we learn to walk. And then other days, I have doctor's appointments just to make sure that. Uh, the muscle growth is growing correctly and that there's no, my muscles aren't dying, uh, that the atrophy in my hand isn't affecting the entire nervous system. Um, a majority of my daily obstacles I face are um, getting out of bed um, and getting dressed because I have such limited range of motion and use on my right arm. I have, most, I have more use of my right arm than some of the guys, so I'm lucky in that fact. Um, taking a shower is really hard because I have to, I have to stay seated. Uh, or if I wear shower legs, there's part of my legs I can't wash um, because there's a cone that covers up the majority of my legs. So. No matter what I do, I'm always going to be missing part of my body whenever I take a shower. Uh, driving. Driving has also become very different as well. Uh, when I drive now, I drive with hand controls because I can't use pedals. It's very different than normal pedals because everything's up here instead of down below. I still have the normal pedals like everyone else. So if like you wanted to drive my vehicle, you can jump in and drive my vehicle if something happened to me and I need to be in the passenger seat if there was an emergency. Um, so it, it, it sucks like that, stuff like that, it, it makes it difficult. So simple things that everyday people get to do, you can't really experience them in the same way? Yeah, and I don't have pain receptors in my hand anymore, so like if I were to accidentally lean my hand on an oven or a stove, a hot stove, I wouldn't know about it until somebody like until someone would mention, "Hey, you know your hands on the oven," and I would probably be bleeding from all the heat blisters. So I mean, little things like that, like being able to tell the difference between hot, cold, and uh, if someone were to step on my hand, I wouldn't know about it until someone would say something. And I would look at it and go, "Oh, okay." Um, I love to, play, I like to play video games. Uh, I play RC, I have a whole bunch of RC cars and airplanes. Um, I love to build models, uh, scuba dive, bike ride. Uh, I got a hand cycle that I ride now because I don't ride a normal bicycle. Uh, that's going to be here in a few weeks. And I also have, like to swim and scuba dive. So I just try and keep myself busy, busy with any hobbies. My favorite hobby though, uh, my absolute favorite hobby of most of all, is uh, playing with my kids.
Well, the plans for the future is, are so far in our uh, homes for our heroes and a bunch of other foundations like the Indianapolis Colts, um, uh, homes for Hoosiers. They're building a house for me right now in Madison County. And um, when I hopefully when I get out of here in about six months to a year or longer, depending upon how my therapy goes, uh, I eventually plan on living there and um, spending the rest of the time, spending a year with my family where I'll be attending school. And after I finish a year of schooling to get my uh, bachelor's degree in information system security, then getting a job, a government job, with either um, in the, uh, uh, with the, uh, the U.S. Army again, doing paychecks, or with the, uh, uh, one of the alphabet soups. And then eventually just staying with them and going on to get my master's in counter cyber terrorism. And then just continuing on my education. And just staying with my family, not going far away from them ever again, just staying close to my family. These last three years haven't been fun. 